When running a clinical trial, the industry standard is a double-blind, placebo-controlled, parallel group trial. This is because it's the best way to ensure that the characteristics of subjects in each treatment group are the same, whilst ensuring the investigators cannot anticipate or influence the treatment of the subject. The randomization of subjects into the trial ensures the success of the trial and the integrity of the results. Randomization ensures that every patient entering a trial has an equal chance of receiving the active treatment. This minimizes potential bias that could be introduced into the clinical trial. There are several factors that need to be taken into account when conducting randomization in clinical trials. All current documentation for the trial should be provided by the client. For example, protocol or protocol amendments. It's important to establish the requirements for the randomization at an early stage and develop a specification document to detail the format that the randomization will take. This allows the client to see the format that the randomization will take without unblinding them to the final randomization schedule. The following must be clearly defined, documented and agreed with the client prior to the randomization being produced. The proportion of subjects to be allocated to the treatment group, stratification factors to be considered, the block size to use, number of centres, how the seed will be defined, what outputs are required, for example the randomization schedule or randomization envelopes, the format any outputs will take, and the recipient or the recipients of the randomization information. Regular communication with the client in developing the specification document will help ensure that the correct information is collected. Then the randomization information is sent to the correct places to ensure there is no accidental unblinding. The team producing the randomization must not be involved in the reporting of the study as they will be unblinded to the treatment allocation and could cause bias in the results. We would advise, where possible, staff at different sites should be utilised. A dummy randomisation may be produced to show the client the exact format and layout of the final outputs. These must be clearly labelled as drafts to ensure that there's no confusion with the final randomisation. Printed randomisation envelopes may also be produced to unblind study personnel in an emergency to the treatment allocation of a particular subject. For example, a subject may be experiencing a serious adverse event and it is critical to find out what treatment they have received. Randomization envelopes allow unblinding of an individual subject without having to unblind the entire study, which could cost the sponsor significant amounts of money and time already invested in the clinical trial. Once a randomization has been produced and sent to the relevant staff, as detailed in the specification document, it's important to store the randomization correctly to ensure that no study staff can be accidentally unblinded to treatment allocations. We recommend that there should be no information stored on computer networks. All randomization information should be stored in a secure facility which has limited access only for certain unblinded staff members. For example, we use fireproof cabinets and controlled access and keep records of which statisticians are allowed to access the keys to these secure facilities. If the randomization of a clinical trial was to be performed incorrectly, it could result in introducing bias into the study results and potentially the use of incorrect methodology. This could require additional analyses to gain regulatory approval for the drug. Randomizations conducted correctly help to ensure that the success of the trial and the integrity of the results.